This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. <laughs> make me dizzy. There's a thing. Go ahead. I find amusement parks to be really fun when there's, like, not a lot of people. But Which, that never happens. <laughs> no, you just have to go on really, on off times. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Eyewitness report. Atlantic Island Park incident. Officer on duty, Sheriff F. Bannerman. Witness name, Norma Creed. We are waiting for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making... Oh, dear. Is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice, and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion. But as more and more ice fell away... When you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of that block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your hair begin to... Heart. Heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick, and blood was spraying, and people were screaming, and Frank and I had the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. Then the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture, making the terrible creature, horrible creature look more or less alive. Well, imagine an eyeball falling onto an ice sculpture where the it, right where the eye is. He probably did it on purpose. He probably just like scooped that ice pick in there and flung it. He's like, know? and then when it landed, he was like, ho ho, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like running and screaming. He's like, all right. You guys see that? You guys see that? You guys, Come on, that was that? so cool. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like upset that nobody's noticed that he like landed that. Oh come on, this perfect shot. <laughs> So anyway, uh, from that other note, I guess you can assume that the guy who was in the suit is also referenced and said, like, he's struggling with life. Yes. So therefore, he killed a bunch of teenagers. Duh. Oh, so <laughs> we really know confirmed that he stabbed one and uh, plucked his eye out. <laughs> Let's hope he killed him because, I mean, it sounds like the kid was a mess. Um, let's think. Yeah, so maybe the, the spooky ghosts of the area. <laughs> Can you imagine being attacked by somebody in one of those costumes? <laughs> oh my god. I would freak, that would freak me out. Well, I mean, it, being attacked overall would be freaky, but. Oh my god. In the costume, and then for the rest of your life. You're terrified of your costumes. Yeah, and then everyone's like, <laughs> why are you terrified of the costumes? Idiot! And then, and then you have to, like, explain that you were almost murdered by somebody in a creepy costume. And yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, so it's an awkward... Really what I'm afraid of is that awkwardness, not... <laughs> yeah, it's not, like, the incident itself. It's more just knowing that you have to explain this to people and you know... Because people are assholes, some people are still going to be like, okay, like, calm down. Oh, you know? you're afraid of clowns? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then so the rest of your life, you have an awkward situation that you have to deal with. It's very stressful. People get shitty about that type of stuff all the time. Is that Can like... I write this thing? Yeah. Maybe. Where do you get on it? Do we miss it? It's right here. Oh. How, miss... tall, how tall do we have to be to ride? Ride Octagon. Okay, while it's moving. Oh, so uh, where's my son? So we I'm have not playing anymore, Cal. Whoa. Where's my son? Anyway, I want to play this on this game. You have to go to the yeah. There you go. Nope. The the chipmunk, and then it'll say yeah. Here we go. 
I like how we're looking for our son, but we're playing on all the stuff. We're like, yeah, no. This is more fun. Well, if he's gonna fuck off, I'm gonna fuck off too. Oh, uh-oh. Oh. No. Spooky things are happening. Da! Everything just keeps speeding up. Oh god, that scared me. For real. Oh, what is that? Well, let's look at it a little bit. Oh, well, it's gone. I can't look at it. Yeah, I don't think it's a... Uh, Maybe if we make it go super fast, it'll come back. Well, we can't get on it while it's moving. No, but it'll come back while we're not... So a spooky man was here. So I'm wondering if this is a mother who, like maybe she had her son very young, you know? Mm-hmm. I wonder if we can break it. That's what I'm seeing, if we can like break it or something weird will happen if we make it go super fast. They're just hating everything right now. Yeah. I'm starting to think this is, this is gonna be one of those things where she's like, I killed him. No, yeah, she left him behind on purpose. Yes. She Treachery left him in the hearts and thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing, and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum is no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought you know a lot of people you know how in tv and movies they're like as soon as i saw my baby oh, i fell in, I love, fell with in love with it instantly like blah 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 it's like sometimes people don't whoa whoa people don't feel that and then because everybody acts like i'm so in love with my baby they feel guilty yeah and I think that's might have been something she was feeling. Like, I feel guilty for not being obsessed with my baby. Can we, like, not look at that thing? It's freaking me out. Okay. Like, she read the page, maybe? <laughs> or just do something? I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun. But the end of, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I am starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush, yeah. as Chad the chipmunk, child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was it was little things, like refusing to change out of it, the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. Ooh. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some, some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside this cycle station because 
he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up, eye-fucking me or whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, I mean Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. Ah. So, at first I thought, oh, he's just a furry who has discovered himself, but no. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I was like, oh, 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 oh no, yeah. never mind. No, that's not it. No, 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 no. <laughs> You should just accept him. Nope, don't don't nope, accept that. Never mind. No, never. That's nope. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Shit, lady. Oh my god. Aw, AJ. AJ, get back on your lap. AJ, come on. I scared him. Hello. Come on. <gasps> Did you hear that? Damn it, I missed it. Follow the trail. It oh. whispered it. Come here, AJ. Here, damn it. Come on. Oh, is that is that just a tree? No, that's a thingy. Like a sculpture. AJ, do you want us to leave you behind in a, an amusement park? That's what I thought. Why would you choose that? I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering what that head was on top of that octopus thing. Okay, AJ, just... It looks like if somebody was trying to make Cthulhu into a child-friendly dinosaur or oh, something. yeah. So I wonder, does this amusement park take, like, the darkest thoughts you have and then, like, you know, magnify them? Because mm. everybody has dark thoughts, but it's, like, dead and, you know, it magnifies. But, um... Like in Ghostbusters? Where it takes what you're thinking about and makes it into a monster? Yes. Do you yes, think... Yes, just like that. Do you think... So she... Has these unrealistic expectations of what her child should make her feel like. I just think she abandoned her son. She left him behind. They were at the amusement park and I'm, she was like, I'm Goodbye. talking about how she feels, but yeah, you know, sometimes... Oh, yeah. You know, and she feels... Constant crashes and 80s music... Guess it floats someone's boat. It can make you feel like you should feel a certain way, but you don't, and then, uh -huh. then you feel shitty. Well, that's why people sometimes get so shitty with women who have um, postpartum depression. Yeah. Oh. Um. Sometimes when women have postpartum depression, they get ETC, which is electric shock therapy, or E-S-T, yes. So maybe she's remembering yeah, maybe. getting electric... But to be fair, uh, electric shock therapy doesn't hurt you, it doesn't feel pain, because you're getting your brain shocked. Um, it's, not, it's not always like a bad thing. Honestly. Not always a bad thing, but uh, I mean, of the people I know who have gotten it, they have trouble with short-term memory, which then makes them sad for different reasons. Yeah. But for people who have are in cases of like people who are so suicidal that they, they think that they're going to die, they will do that. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's like it's a thing that still happens today. Like, I knew a woman who had it because she had postpartum depression, and uh, when she would come back from it, she was having a hard time remembering things. And then knew another woman who had it done, and it had been years later, and she was saying that uh, it helped in the short term, but now she has a hard time remembering things, and that makes her sad. Mm -hmm. So, that's all I know. I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. That's just what I know from knowing people but mm. anyway 
maybe she had postpartum depression and that was something that happened to her. Maybe. Francis Dufresne, uh, labor working on the crane. Richard Stevens. During the transport of the bumper car into cars into the arena, one of the straps attached to the load of the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars into Francis, who was standing di- directing, directing the driver. driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the car. Blah, blah. Francis was killed. Injured. Do you file employers? Yes. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the strap. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff was requested that Dexter provide them with urine sample. We could have been blah, blah, blah. double checking the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Yeah. Whoa. Back to the future. Whoop. We want to go up there. Yeah. Spooky Ghost is like, go up here. Go. Go up the stairs. I don't have another way to direct you. <laughs> it's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Oh, shit. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead, my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. What would you write a ticket for her? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, what? What ticket? What's the ticket? Baby in a car ticket? No, they would just like, <laughs> what? No, they would They would bring you down to the station and they would write you up for it, but... But they well, don't just, like, you don't just, like, write a ticket and say, like, here, send $35 down to the station. <laughs> baby in a car. Like. Baby in a car. <laughs> baby in a car, fine. <laughs> yeah. But on a more serious note. Uh, don't leave your baby in the car. And also. Uh, don't leave your dog in the car. And also. Um, so was her interpretation of getting help, like. Is this, the, like, she thought if she got help, she was going to get electroshock therapy or I something? I'm not sure whether she meant... I already got help and it didn't help, or... or like, that's the help that I ended up getting. Like, yeah. I tried to seek help and that's what they did to me. Or yeah. whether it was, like, you know, I tried that and that's what they did, and now I can't remember and I left him in the car. You know? Oh, there's a note. Whoa. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they are locals, and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what old man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on the they grew up on those tales. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, th- those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies and the thought of all that power just just dissipating. I have a hard time reading this. Just dissipating beneath the earth here. It makes my skin crawl, cram? Crawl. Crawl? I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about the local history. 
turns out they do, and it turns out that old man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of, of the plans that I'm missing. Oh, so he seems like he's like, they are so stupid. Anyway. Um, Whatever. But anyway, he's like, I can't imagine all that power being gone. What did he do? Like, mm-hmm. So maybe he bought the land on purpose and has been sacrificing his employees to do crazy things. Good. As one should. As one should when there's a lot of dark energy hanging about. So, I guess we gotta ride this thing. That's gonna be freaky. Do you know the very first Ferris wheel was in Chicago? Oh, it was at the World's Fair, right? Yeah, you know that Ferris wheel that we always see? That was the first one. What Ferris wheel? The Ferris wheel at whatever, at the at Navy Pier. Oh, I've never actually been there. But you see it when we, we drive by it all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. That's the very first Ferris wheel ever. Oh. It's, it's Isn't the that same kind of one? Cool? Well, you know, they've probably switched out so many parts that it's... Oh, no my one. God! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a you know, ticking time bomb. <laughs> well, would you go on, on the uh, Eiffel Tower? Yeah, but I mean, they... They've done stuff to it since then. So they had done the same thing to the... I mean, at the very least, they paint it, which is like pretty much the same as fixing it, right? <laughs> yeah. They're like, we'll just slap some paint on it. Those bolts are fine. It's an interesting thing. Um, the Ferris wheel was the United States' way of trying to one-up the Eiffel Tower. Because the Eiffel Tower was at the World's Fair in Paris. Yes. And they were like, check this thing out. It's ugly. And everyone was like, whoa, it's so amazing. And everyone, and, but whatever. Yeah. And so then a bunch of people like had all these like really weird ideas. It's like one was like, um, you know, those like really tall slides. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a toboggan slide where they're like going to have a really tall toboggan slide source. And just have people slide all the way to, like, different cities or some shit. People had really weird ideas, like, a hundred years ago. You know, it's... When you... If you look at, um... I'm gonna increase it for a bit. Go ahead, keep talking. Oh, if you look at, like, you know... I'm not sure if you've ever seen those, like, like Land of Tomorrow type things where... Because they used to do lots of, like, World's Fair and you know, futuristic things where all these people would come up with ideas of what they thought the future was going to be like. And, of course, some of them end up coming true, but... Like electric toothbrushes? I remember watching, like, some sort of Disney vault thing where they're like, the land of tomorrow, where it was like, in the future there will be electric toothbrushes. (laughs) Like, you know? Mm -hmm. I I mean, they're... They had a lot of, like, predictions on, like, Star Trek about, like, different technological advances that we would have, like, tablets and, you know, communicator cell phones and stuff like that. It would be a really good scare would be if, like, somebody was sitting in one of there staring at you. That would be a really good scare. Yeah. Without it being, like, any noise or anything, it's just something that you might notice. I find that almost, like, yeah. That would be a really good scare if someone was just sitting in there. Just like, I feel like up. you're looking at it, just waiting for it to happen. I can't get on while it's moving. Shut up. 